That's an eternity of basketball ahead of us. Another beautiful steal perpetrated by Todd White. The action continues. The let go situation here. I'm going to take it. Going up against another team. Jeffrey Moore has perfect access to the bucket. Watch yourself on that normal replay of that last bit of action was Juan Fernandez actually wanting to be Poppy as if Master Jaworski. We're crossing the twilight zone. That's an eternity of basketball ahead of us. It's been two years since he started the Pasig River Cleanup and Dredging Project. Before that, we were doing the Sulyahan River Cleanup Project in 2020. For Pasig River, Mr. Nang is allocating 2 billion pesos to clean up the river. We are pleased to report that uh, so far for the past two years that we have been cleaning up, we have already removed about 1.3 million metric tons of silt and waste in both Pasig River and uh, San Juan River. And we have already covered more than 22 kilometers of the 27 kilometers of Pasig River and here more than 5.4 kilometers of San Juan River. So. Our focus was really more on the shallow areas of uh, both the rivers. Importante yung talaga dredging. Pero mo, one meter lang, ilalagyan mo tubig. Paano hindi aapaw dito sa lupain? Kaya yun ang isang problema. Tara na napakagaling ang San Miguel sa tulong para sa taong bayan. Last two years, medyo mababaw na lang. Walang ganong problema. Oh, hindi pa nag-dredging dito ang San Miguel. Binabaha dati. Pero ngayon, wala namang... Hindi na masyadong mataas ang tubig, wala na masyadong kaming pangamba dito. Ang mga ganda na collective efforts, we really can solve this problem. Kasi economically, uplift the livelihoods of the poor and the rich. Para magpantay-pantay, ayos lahat para kaginhawa for everyone. We're almost nearing the completion of the river cleanup here in Pasig River and San Juan River. We are targeting to finish by July or August of this year. Our aim uh, to contribute you know, to the community at San Miguel is able to you know, help in the not only in terms of reducing river pollution, but also to increase the uh, water holding capacity of the river so that we can mitigate flooding in the future. Welcome to an eternity of basketball. We are part of the Globally Ballin Network. Catch us on the YouTube channel of Globally Ballin. Look at all the trending episodes, Bogs Adornado, all the way down to Chito Loy Saga. Which one's your favorite? Keep watching. Okay, original articles, video, and audio projects on globallyballin.com. Check out the website for all of that. And on Twitter as well, we are streaming there right now, so you can watch us there as well. Link 3 slash Globally Ballin is the link you need for all of those. Well, here we are. We made it to episode 200, guys. I'm Charlie Cunha together with Sid Ventura and Jay Mercado. Thanks for joining us this morning here in the Philippines, uh, out in Mexico. It's, uh, it's about uh, 8 p.m. in the evening. So our guest, you all know him. He played for the RP team in the 80s, brought glory to our country with the rest of that NCC slash San Miguel squad that competed in several tournaments abroad and also in the PBA winning a championship first amateur first and only amateur team to win a championship in the PBA uh, by way of Roxdale uh, Texas uh, via Tucson Arizona and now in uh, Puerto Vallarta in Mexico we bring him in now Jeffrey Moore is with us on this episode 200 hey Jeff how you doing man I'm really great, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. And we love the shirt, Filipinas, of course, because you, know, you did serve this country. You played crazy <laughs> tournaments for us back in the 80s, which we were watching either on, uh, sometimes it was via satellite, uh, sometimes it was live on TV, and, and we would catch you and the guys, of course, Chip and, and, and uh, Dennis, and the rest of the guys, Sam Boy, <laughs> Alan, and all of them uh, winning those tournaments. So, you know, let, let's start from the start, Jeff. I, I know you, right now you're, you're into coaching and all of that, but we'll go to the start. We'll, we'll, we'll reverse. And how did you get started in basketball? Why did you choose basketball as your sport, uh, being in the U.S., where there's so many other sports to play? Well, I mean, in sports, I mean, in general, in the United States, we all play baseball, basketball, 
American football and usually until we get into um, high school. And then we make a decision which uh, sport we would like to play. But I had a, a bunch of our older brothers. I'm the youngest of eight kids. And all of them had to follow in their footsteps. So I've been playing basketball or any kind of sport all my life. So uh, I had to learn to, to be tough. So they never gave me an inch, you know, it doesn't matter if they were three years older. And I attributed a lot of this to them, you know, uh, pushing me and pushing me. But at one point in junior high school, I had a coach. He uh, heard Buckner, he played um, with the Blow Trotters. He was, he was a, a great, very good player from uh, Detroit. And he basically had me motivated to actually want to play maybe as a career. Uh, he was very engaging. I consider myself similar to him. You know, an ex-player, trying to help young kids, you know, move forward and do what they have to do. You know, he used to get out there and dunk on us as he was young enough. And I found myself doing the same, you know, the kids love it. And from there, we went to, I went to a little high school where we won two state championships back to back. Uh, 77 and 78, we went 30 and 0. Bring them a four in the nation. Uh, so we've been making history ever since we started. So, so that's how we got started. When you, when, you were, when you played in high school in, in Pueblo, so you were about maybe what, 15? 15 years old? Uh, that's when you started playing basketball seriously and, and dedicated yourself to basketball. That's when you abandoned all these other sports. So I started focusing on just getting basketball. I, I saw myself, you know, enjoying it. I thought it was the most complete sport, you know, where you use your quickness, you know, have a lot of breaks. And it just kept me busy every second and I was on the court. And uh, I really think it's one of the top conditioning, the top complete sport that we have in the so. You know, Jeff, Jeff, we're, we're kind of losing you on the audio. Yeah, uh, the, the audio is kind of coming in and out. So I don't know if you can move closer or what to the mic, just so, so everyone can hear what you're... Yeah. Yeah. We'll work on that. But what I'm saying is that, you know, just uh, I thought basketball was the most complete sport of all the sports. And... Yeah motivated me you know i was a young energetic player you know baseball was my first love which i was good at that but mm -hmm. you know in the summer in arizona 120 degrees <laughs> it's pretty hard to be there with no movement going on besides the yeah. in the, in the back. uh so you know i quickly uh develop a, a love for the game of basketball and that's where we ended up yeah. Jeff, did you have any early idols, you know, basketball players like in the NBA that you looked up to or patterned your game after? Yeah, I'm one of those guys. I always wanted to play. I would get excited watching Dr. J. You know, that's when he was making his run in the ABA. And, you know, as as I grew, then, I, you know, I was looking at young men few years older than me, Michael Jordan, of course. You know, that's my generation. And I just enjoyed watching, you know, uh, NBA basketball games. But I always thought the college level was the best way to learn. You know, NBA, you know, they play when they want to play. Playoff time, it really gets exciting. And that's all sports and trolls. But uh, the college level is where you really, really learn how to play because all coaches like myself, they push you to a limit and then beyond every day. So as you get to be a professional like you are, uh, but it shouldn't stop there, you know, as well as I do. When I played in the Philippines, I've, I've given it my all. It didn't matter. Once I came to, uh, the, I mean, to Mexico, it didn't matter. When to Argentina, it didn't matter. I always played the game the way I thought it was meant to play all out, you know, and it allowed me to play. I was 47 years old 
at the highest level here in Mexico uh, because of that. And I'm still playing to this day. Uh, it was a sport that I put all my heart and soul into. And it's helped me healthy and and in shape. Uh, and most people can't believe I can still dunk at 63. It's not an <laughs> wow. It's not an alley but God has blessed me to be in, in, in great shape. Besides the time I had the uh, COVID, which took me down pretty hard, but I'm now getting back to where I used to be. That, that, that brings me to the question, Jeff. Uh, uh, I thought you would have been a great track and field athlete. High jump, uh, you're, you, you would run pretty quickly as well. Did you dabble in track and field also back then? Oh, yeah, I did. I mean, the coach asked me to. Uh, but our contract was because I wasn't really interested in track again because you're sitting around waiting for this to go <laughs> and it's hot out there. <laughs> so, uh, we just finally said, okay, if you want to come out, you know, you only show up for me. So I, I ended up going out there, didn't have a real technique, but I, like you say, I jumped very high. So, uh, uh I was winning, and I jumped, what, 6'9", with, what, 2'5", something like that in wow. high school. And I did that with a broken with a broken wrist, with a cast on. So, <laughs> so I'm a freak of nature, you know. I'm uh, yes. an athlete, you know, and I really, truly thank God for blessing me to, uh, to be not only the physical, well, I really think I see the world in a different way, and I teach it in a different way, you know, similar to the way Ron Jacobs used to do it. And Ron was my final straw. He taught me the rest of what I needed to know. Uh, unfortunately, most players don't have a chance to have a mentor from start to finish. I was with Ron Jacobs from El Camino Junior College, when I'm 20, 19 years old until 28 in the Philippines. So I went with him from El Camino very much. And I transferred to the University of Hawaii for six months until he got that job in the Philippines. And of course, I was born and that I had so much confidence in and, and he, he discovered me and, and we had a beautiful career all throughout. Right, right. That was great year, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead, since you yeah, since you mentioned physical, um, when you decided to embark on a basketball career in high school, how tall were you uh, that time already? Not much taller than what I was. I am now, but but I played okay. center. But you played center. Okay. So it helped me in the long run. I mean, like, that's why NBA, I, it would have been hard to get in. I had the physical ability. I would have had to... Uh, be a quick learner at the one, two, and three position, you know, which I would have, but uh, it helped me in the long run. That's why it didn't matter in the world games. David Robinson is guarding me. I had a jump hook. He couldn't block. I had quick feet, and I could defend the bigs. If you watch the Italian game, uh, mm -hmm. it is last. That I'm like, Dennis, why do I have the 7 2 guy if you got the 6 9 guy? You know, but I think. Mean, because Dennis likes it easier, man. That's why. <laughs> uh, no, Dennis doesn't back down from a challenge, and neither did I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I some kind of strategy from Ron Jacobs, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's not just out there playing pickup games. It's really structuring and having a plan. And that's what I learned from him. And that's how I coach today, you know. And I've had incredible success. Because I read people well. And I put you in a position that's comfortable for you. But also fits in with what everybody else is doing. You know, we get it right. We work hard. We work hard. And that deters a lot of young players. But that's the only way to, to reach your potential. And only God knows how far that would take you. If you're good enough and you work hard enough, you know, you could be in the NBA, you could be on a national team, and you could be in overseas somewhere. And, and I was uh, 
I was truly that guy. I was a coach's dream. You know, whatever he asked me to do, it has been the yeah. question and I did it as I can, you know, and, and, and I think that's what made me the, the player, the complete player that I was. You know, in the Philippines, I, I had block shots, I got steals, I scored points. As points came easy, I played the hardest guy on the other team. I could go mm-hmm. from uh, position to three, and I looked out, I was telling somebody the other day, when I reflect back on uh, pressure game, and uh, Jake would give me the ball, and I never was great with the left hand. Seriously, most people didn't know that. I didn't learn how to use my left hand until I was well into No, seriously. And I kept working on it, and it became my strong hand. That's a, that's a lesson learned, that you can work on something. And it became my strong hand. It just automatically, when the pressure hit me, I go to the left and, and, and control it that way. But that's hard work and, and dedication. To, uh, put in the work, so. Right, right. And, and that's what it's all about. And since, since we're going down memory lane anyway, I think it's time we enter our first segment, Jeff, on the show. We'll just go down memory lane, look at some photos of you. It's called the uh, Time Capsule. And the Time Capsule okay. is brought to us by Fitbit. It helps everyone in the world get healthier from counting your steps to giving personalized insights on your heart rate and sleep patterns, log your exercise, and access great tools and content on the Fitbit Premium, all on the Fitbit platform. Check out their line of products. On Fitbit.com, feel the power. Let's go. You mentioned El Camino. And there you are. Oh, my God. On El Camino. Right? There's your, yeah. there's your squad. You got, you got the fro. You got the Dr. J fro there, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Everybody did. That was a Dr. J, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a, a weird team right there. But like I said, not a lot of superstars. Ron Jacobs could bring the best out of people that could do much, you know what I mean? He knew how to put a team together. And as you keep popping up these pictures and it start to realize, even in the Philippines, we didn't have the best players in, the, in that country, you know, but he worked. And that's why I'm such a valid fan of teamwork. You know, one team, one dream. And we can put it together and make things happen. That's right. So at this, at this stage, El Camino, you know, you're playing for these guys, as you said, were you you were a center on this team because you got number fifty four, fifty two. They're all taller than you guy than you. Uh-huh. But you were you were the center. Forward, I was a small small forward. Uh, you know that can switch on a big or whatever, and switch on a guard if I had to because I was quick enough. That team right there wasn't any superstars. I was the first. That's a, as a junior high. I mean, a junior college team. But doing the college is for local athletes only. So I was the first out of state player to play on that team. Everybody there was born in California, you know. Uh, I came in here in the Philippines, you know, I got my residency <laughs> per se in uh, in California to be able to play on that team as a, you know, California. So that was another tribute. Like I say, I made a first in a a lot of things I did in my career. Mm-hmm. And how did you end up after this when you were El Camino? How do you end up in an NCAA Division One program like like Loyola Marymount? How do you make that transition? Like I told you, I was getting recruited. That was my first year, and El Camino was a two year college. You know, but I knew I was good enough. I could have. Uh, well, I had offers going directly out of high school. But I wanted to go and get my grades up so I can get to a better school. You know, Arizona State, they were fighting with Ron. One of the coaches, you know him, Paul Howard, assistant coach over there at uh, at Arizona State, and a good friend. The fact that he was the best player, me or Lafayette leader, boy called Lafayette leader, played on my high school team, and he ends up going to uh, Arizona State and then to the NBA. But uh, but that was the whole deal that um, we just had to figure out a way for me to be able to play there, and, and I did. And, and it was just a bunch of simple guys, you know. Uh, and that's the first start of seeing Ron Jacobs do his magic, and like he was doing much. But he's not a yeller, you know. He talks to you. 
He gets good people around him, you know, a defensive coordinator where he's the yellow, he's the one you hate. And, and you know, he set up an offense surrounded about by, you know, the best players. But everybody had a role to do, even back then. And we did it well. And uh, we won the conference championship that year at El Camino, which was amazing. And then I moved on to uh, Loyola Marymount with him. He took the job there, and there they are. Uh, when we arrived there, we were 5 and 21. Okay. And we flipped it in we flipped it in one year to 25 and uh, and five. You know, won the conference championship. First time ever, Loyola Marymount made it to the NCAA tournament, the round of 64. Mm -hmm. I mean, another hit, uh, ordeal all in one year. You know, a lot of those guys are uh, doing the college transfers. Uh, and that's where, after that season, that's when uh, I met Dennis Dico. We, uh, Ron Jacobs, I found out about him. Uh, Dennis was at South Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, but happy, you know, from what I hear, what he tells me. There's more to it, but yeah, he was unhappy. <laughs> and uh, but we recruited him, and he comes in for a recruiting trip. So Ron Jacobs told me, you know, take a good look at him, you know, tell him what you think of him on and off the court, you know. Is he too much for me to handle or, you know, uh, do we want him? So we had done Dennis hung out, you know, for that weekend. Of course, Dennis had a lot of experience. So he was uh, coming out of uh, high school, you know, one of the top top athlete basketball players in, in, in the country. You know, everybody wanted Dennis Steele. Uh, so he was talking and me and him, you know, uh, met each other and thinking he's going to just take the money and run. <laughs> so we had a great relationship. And then once we got on the floor, he put us up against, you know, two other guys. And it was just magic, you know, uh, 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 a slasher, a uh, slasher, you know, a guy that can do a lot of things and, and a real power center. He was the first real Dennis Robin. We didn't lift weights in that time like they do now. Dennis was a solid guy. And he was the first guy I ever seen get his, 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 his dunk pinned up against the backboard and pull it down and dunk it backwards. <laughs> you know, and that was part of his plan. You know, he put it up there so you could block it, but he was strong enough to bring it down. They don't get out for us, and that was impressive. So we played well together. You know, me up alley oop, and, and I do my thing. So you know, he appreciates that. Your talent, our uh, character, you know, uh, we see it in one another, and that's how we became friends. Yeah, Jeff, what was it like the transition from playing at a junior college to you know NCAA Division One? Uh, at Loyola Marymount, you know, the level of competition that you went up uh, week in and week out. Uh, were you able to just adjust to it right away? I was because I was a Division One guy coming out of high school. Like I say, 30 and 0, 4 in the nation. But like I said, I had to go to a place where I could get my grades up. I didn't want to go to a, a, a four year school and, and struggle. You know, so my decision, and I'm coming out of Tucson, Arizona. It wasn't my game. It was just my confidence, you know. Tucson, Arizona is not a big known uh, hub for throwing out NBA players or big-time college players, you know. So, you know, I didn't have the confidence to play against guys from Vegas, North Carolina, you know, Duke and all of that. Back, back then, it was Las Vegas, um, uh, New Mexico, they were at the top of the line, UCLA, USC. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I just wanted to go, and, and my whole plan was to stay one year, give me some confidence, get away from Tucson in the big city. And it just happened to work that way, get my confidence. I'm a shy guy, you know. Like I said, coach your dream. I did what you asked me to do. I didn't even do more and, and see Ron Jacobs, he just blew me the whole way. He actually had to tell me, Jeff, I need you to take more shots. 
you know, most players, you got to say, yo, don't shoot so much ass to somebody else. But I was such a team player, you know, just from the get-go. And uh, he brought the best out of me, you know, taught me what I really could be, you know. Don't settle for less, you know. You can do this, take your shot, you know, taught me how to be smart, make the right decisions. And so it wasn't a hard transition. It was just learning, learning all the... Um, the little details that, that that makes a superstar. <laughs> that when the game turned around for LMU, how did the community react? Uh, did you become an instant superstar in campus? You know, I'm, I've been gradual doing because I do things that, that that most people wouldn't even notice. You know, my hustle. I get a chip on a loose ball in a clutch moment. You know, and, and it tips off the other guy because I barely got it. He couldn't get it. And we get the ball, you know. Most people can notice that, you know, or just being in the right place uh, for help to make I travel or think twice or, or get a block. So so it was always there, but it wasn't highlighted until I started taking over as, um, as a score. And like I say, I was always a defensive Stopper, even in, in high school, defense, rebounds. In high school, I didn't shoot past 15 feet, you know, because I was playing center. That was my role, you know. So Loyola, I started shooting out a little further, you know, by the years. And that's just pretty much how it went. So, um, but it was just a process that, that came along gradually. I, uh, like, because I never considered myself as a superstar, so others would probably look at me as being that guy. Because uh, each, if you notice, each game I went through, I started out at a certain average, you know, going in, going three down. But I got better as the season went on, and it showed in everywhere I've been, you know, because I got more confidence, more aware of what I'm doing. And by the time uh, playoffs come around, then I am the man because I done learned through the whole process. I'm confident. I know my teammates. And that's a special uh, skill set. Everybody doesn't have that, you know, to be aware, aware of, of, of your teammates' uh, needs and their uh, weak points, you know, and helping them and, and giving them the ball when I know they can put it down, not when we're not before and not after, you know. So I think I was always meant to be a coach. And I was just coaching on the court through doing what I do as a player. Hey, Jeff, I'm sure everybody's curious. Uh, obviously, when you talk about uh, Jeff Moore, then it's still always connected to Ron Jacobs. Yeah. Do you know you're at LMU and all of a sudden uh, – Ron Jacobs is contacted by somebody in the Philippines offering him a job. Do you know that story? I mean, did he tell you how it happened? Because obviously he recruited you to come along with him. But but would you know what happened? How did Ron get, get his gig here in the Philippines? Might be another story. You know, you told me some of it. You might know some I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your version? Wait. No, but you, the way you're asking the question is like, yeah, you know something I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, it was basically that, that because uh, I was in Hawaii, me and uh, the other guy, Rob Wood, in number 44, with another little player, and he was with us the first year down there in uh, the Philippines. Uh, so I'm, I'm Hawaii, you know, ready to finish my career there, you know, red shirt, not even... Okay. We lost him. We lost you. We lost your audio, Jeff. We lost your audio. All right, Jeff, we can't hear you. Phone call. There you go. Phone call. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's the deal. Okay, we can hear you now. We can hear you now. Oh, he's gone. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a we have one of our one of our fans is asking, did he get thirty rebounds in a game? Yes, he did. 
He did. Right? That's Boo Boo Sarte. Thanks for watching. That's right. I, he mentioned yeah, something about number 44. But that's Bob Worthy. Yeah, Robert Worthy. That's Robert right. Worthy. One of the first. Who was on? He, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, he became Pinoy. Then, yeah. Um, hindi yata natuloy. <laughs> hindi ba natuloy? Ano pala? Recruit ko lang, ano? He Kasama could have been a Filipino. I think he was included in the Jones Cup, in the 1981 Jones Cup team. That, that controversial Jones Cup team, no? That, that yeah. uh, not too many cheered for because That's right. there, was, there were only two actual Filipinos on that squad, yeah. right? And two Phil Ams uh, also and eight Americans. <laughs> yeah, so the two the two Filipinos were Frankie and JV, right? That's correct. That's correct. JV Yango, Frankie Lim, and then the two Philams were Willie Pearson and Ricardo Brown. Yeah, that's correct. Also, and then the rest you know, si Jeff Moore, hindi pa naturalized Robert. non. Tausian si Robert Worthy, Steve Lingerfelter, uh, yeah. yeah, I think he's back. Let's bring him back in. Is he there? Is he there? We're looking for the... Oh, okay, let's go. There you are, Jeff. Yeah, we're back. There's no technology, no man. No so where were we about that story? Okay, where were we on that story? You're asking me what now? About about the next run, how, I, how you guys ended up here. So you were in Hawaii and then he called you? Yeah, yeah. I was in Hawaii, you know, six months. I mean, uh, he called me probably a month into my school season. Uh, and I really wasn't still in Hawaii. You know, I could say it was beautiful. Uh, I would have did well there. I mean, they were all excited about it because I was the best player coming in, you know. Uh, uh, you know, their seniors couldn't do anything with me. So so I get this call from, from Ron, and, you know, he gave me all the uh, options, you know, because he's worried about my well-being, you know. He said, if you want to stay, you know, I understand. This is an opportunity. And it's a new project. He said, um, if it doesn't work out, then, you know, you go back to, to college. And uh, in AIA under the radar, and, and, and you still get to where you want to go by doing that. Uh, the longer I thought about it, I talked to my mom, you know, she wasn't really into it, but she understood, you know, uh, financially, it would help everybody if I didn't go to the business. So the thing is, we decided to go to. Uh, to the Philippines, you know, and, and then I heard Dennis was going it, so, you know, it was a no-brainer, so we ended up making our way there, and uh, and then we, we, we ended up, you know, and then we remember the first year, that's it, and we had 12 Americans out there, they Filipinos, <laughs> and a few of us, you know, Ricardo Brown, was already a uh, Latino American, Willie Pearson. They brought in uh, Eddie Gonzalez, and the rest of us were state Americans. You know, uh, the future and the pros. We wanted to stay and uh, and um, try out to be be different bigs and stuff. So that was the first opportunity. Got a chance to meet the, the big boss who came for one time. Just let me cut you off there. There's a sound coming from behind. I don't know if that's the fan or something. Just, yeah. I don't know, but there's a sound yeah. coming in and it's overpowering your voice a bit. So it's, oh, there's a parade going by the house. Uh, so. Oh, I, there's a parade. Okay, that's yeah. why. That's why this. You're in Mexico. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you're in Mexico. Okay, there's a fiesta going on. Oh, so, oh yeah, the day of the dead or uh, uh, the Virgin Mary or something. So they just walking up. You know how there's a 12 day. So I can't even do it without that. It wouldn't matter where I went. You're going to hear that. <laughs> okay, okay. Go ahead. So as long as it's clear. Yeah. So you, so these are the guys. It's going to get louder in a minute again. So what's up? <laughs> okay, so you were talking about these guys. There's, I see Dennis over there. Of course, yeah. some of the local guys, uh, you know, Itoy, Esguero, Frankie Lim. You got uh, Joel Banal and some of these other guys. But this was your first squad. Ron Jacobs is on the right. You have Pilo Pomarin, of course, you know him, the dad of France. And then, who are these two? 
Who's that American gentleman beside J. Biango? The guy with the striped, blue stripes. Man, this well, is Bruce, Bruce, uh, Bruce Willis. I mean, uh, I think of his name. Was. He was uh, from, uh, he came in with Ben Lindsay. The assistant coach. There's three of them that came in with Ben. And, and they were trying out, you know. A lot of them thought they were going to take Dennis and I job. And I know you, you guys need to take them. <laughs> Yes, it's too much noise now. Gotta let, gotta let that go by. <laughs> the brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, gotta mute you gotta mute that for a bit. We will pass. Yeah, that's, that's gonna go by soon. Of course, Eddie Joe Chavez is the guy beside Ricardo Brown. Everybody knows that. Uh -huh. Joe the first boss that takes in the middle. <laughs> Or Henry Kwang. Oh no, that's Andy. That's Andy. Uh, this, is, this is the first time that our show is getting stopped, not because of a technical difficulty, but because of a fiesta. <laughs> There's a procession going on. <laughs> and they've got trumpets and whatever that's going on there. So uh, hopefully it'll this pass is, uh, pretty soon. Yeah, they're celebrating. They're celebrating because we have our 200th episode today. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're celebrating. Give you a good look at what's going on out there. The parade of people following them, and they're just going down there, locked up all the streets. So yeah. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah. We, can. we can. We can. We can. Get it in as fast as we can. But that was Ben Lindsay, uh, and he brought a few guys from you know, with him uh, to, you know, to be that part of the uh, national team. Because the older I got, I, it was, it was uh, quite ingenious what Polanco did, you know, with, with bringing in 12 Americans. He knew that wouldn't fly. He knew that they weren't going to go for it, even though it was legal by presidential decree. It's legal, but do you want to do that? You know what I mean? So he knew they were going to end up giving you some. And so they ended up giving us three. And it happened to be Dennis, myself, and Jeff England. And that's all needed to, to really put basketball back on the map for the uh, Philippines. And I just thought that was ingenious that, you know, they were going to give us something because if not, he could have continued with the 12 and been, off, been within his rights to do so. Uh -huh. uh, Jeff, Jeff uh, the Ning brought in um, both Ben Lindsay and um, Ron Jacobs together. Um, what roles did the two play uh, when it came to the ninth, uh, to that particular team in the, in the Jones Cup? No, it was Ron Jacobs' team. Ron brought in uh, Ben Lindsay, you know, testing him as an uh, NAIA coach. And he had some, uh, they had one NAIA in, uh, because the, the, the team was from Arizona. And uh, so he had two or three national championships or junior colleges. And I don't know how long uh, Ron knew him or didn't know him. But he comes in, he's supposed to be the, the, the enforcer. Of course, him and Dennis didn't hit off at all, you know. <laughs> Dennis was not Dennis was knocking out every practice. But it didn't last long, you know. His personality wasn't what we needed, what, what the, uh, the Filipinos, they didn't like him either. He was too much of a military guy with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. I don't know what that chip was. But his personality, he didn't have one. And that's a hard, that's a hard one. When, like I say, really, no personality. You, you know, you couldn't get a joke or you couldn't, you couldn't tell a joke, you know what I'm saying? You just, that's it. And that's what I saw in him. And I wasn't going to listen to him. Yeah, Jake's my man. You know, I go straight to Jake if I had a problem. I don't know that this guy trying to have me doing stuff that I know I shouldn't be doing. But I can just go straight to the, to the source. 
because he wasn't the head coach, and I think he didn't like that. You know, that's that's that. Me playing my defense. Yeah. Yep, uh, you're playing defense against one of the best players, uh, the PBA at the time. That's Philip Cesar from CRISPA. CRISPA. Yeah. That's why, like I said, we learned so much because then when we went there as amateurs, these were the veterans, the new uh, generation, the old generation, and we really learned how to play the game as men. I give it a second. <laughs> they're they're, they're yep. passing yeah. again. The, that yeah. parade's getting noisy it's again. long parade. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. it's uh, well, I think it's winding down. Yeah. Uh, but Jeff, I just want to ask you, what was your initial impression on the Filipino brand of basketball when you when you first came over and you saw your teammates, your local teammates, and then when you started playing against the uh, other teams? First part I didn't hear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I asked you. Uh, What's your initial impression on the Filipino brand of basketball when you first came over? My first impression was, why am I always landing on the ground on the back of my head? (laughs) And it wasn't a foul. I was like, whoa, man, this is a different basketball game. You know, we're kids, like I say, 19, 20 years old. These guys were 25, 27. Some of them would even look like they were 40. But they're killing us, you know. They slower and didn't jump as high, but we could, you know, they knew how to play the game. It was a very aggressive game, which allowed me, like I say, I never back down from a challenge. But it made me better. Like I say, anything that makes me, that I survive makes me stronger. So it made me better for any league in the world that I went to. It was easy. You know, I was used to that. And, and, and I was on another country, and I was the one that was too aggressive to the other people. But, uh, yeah, they, they taught you how to be a man. I always said that it was a man's game. And at that time, it first, I mean, the second only professional basketball uh, league in the world, yeah. you know, um, it's called that, you know, uh, so, 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 yeah, there were two professionals and uh, every night out, it was a challenge, you know, they could shoot well, like I said, they played the game really, really well, uh, for them not to be noticed, you know, in some other parts of the world, they just hadn't, like I said, you couldn't get past China, so you can be yeah. seen. And, you know, you didn't have any internet. You didn't have any, uh, you know, uh, uh, anything. You can just videotape it and send it to CNN. You know, you had to actually go and watch that kid in person, you know, and go to some uh, pay phone and put a quarter in <laughs> and make the call, you know. <laughs> So that hurt us as far as any American that left the United States at that point was taking a risk. Because if you left, they might forget about you, you know. But then Dennis decided to leave, you know. To the national team, you know, we love the game. And we always believed in who we were, believed in, in Ron Jacobs. So if we had any chance of... Uh, Making it to the to the uh, world game uh, uh, or the Olympics, then you know we knew we, if we had a shot, as long as we were healthy and had a decent team, the two of us could get it done. And that's exactly what happened. Now, Jeff, I'm guessing this photo was taken from 1981 because judging from the uniform of Crispa and and your uniform, it says training team. No. Uh, but you went up against both Crispa and Toyota. Who impressed you more? Which team impressed you more? Crispa, yeah, so they were the big guns uh, at the time. But they, but the style of play was two different ones. Okay. Crispa was different than Toyota at that time. Uh, I don't know. The Americans they had, I remember Toyota being more of a fanatic. Team, you know, with the bigs they had, 
you know, I think uh, and Chris are more warriors, you know, a little bit more physical, even though both teams had physical. But somewhat, somehow it sticks in my mind that, that Toyota was uh, a little bit better overall, you know. But uh, but they both had great Americans on their team. Allowed us to, uh, to perfect what an international uh, league would look like, you know. So, uh, you know, it, and we didn't know if we were coming back in 82, you know. Everybody left. And they called me back. I was the only one to come back in 82 until they figured out what they were going to do with the life citizen and everything else. So I stayed with Ron Jacobs uh, and his home together. And I played five exhibition games at uh, LaSalle, you know, the oh, university yeah. team, the whole year. Yeah, so I was, uh, the PDA, a lot of those guys became my friends. They would come over to the house, you know, and uh, we would hang out, go to the club, you know, because I had to find something to keep me busy. You know, I wasn't playing. I was just there. And uh, so that was the deal with that. I was wondering if you guys remember any of these. What's that? What is that? That's a gold medal. That's a gold medal, yeah. Yeah. Oh, one, one of your medals. Which one is that? That's the one, the second, uh, what is it? The uh, the championship and the uh, second World Cup championship. That was the World Cup championship, you know, that they gave to uh, all the football fans. Right there, let me show you. World Interclub. World Interclub, yeah, the Interclub. 85, right? Yeah. This is what we got at the college. For making it to the Olympics. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. That's when, uh, when, what's his name? Uh, Michael Keon. Uh, Keon. Michael Keon. Yeah. yeah. He was the president and he him on the back of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, kept, you kept some of those stuff. Huh? So, you, so your career just yeah. takes off. You're here, you're here in the Philippines. You came back. Yeah, what's this? Which one is that one? This was the. In, uh, I think Kuala Lumpur. Okay. Oh, ABC. ABC. That's yeah. the ABC tournament. Asian basketball. Yeah. So yeah, I kept a few things uh, because I traveled so much. I lost a lot, but uh, that's just part of the makeup when you're bouncing around and you know packing fast and leaving stuff at a. And you know, I left a half a <laughs> left half of my life in the Philippines. All my clothes, because we thought we were coming back. Left my dog. I didn't take all my stuff. I just took some of it, and never got that back. You know, I had the people in the apartment, of friends that we knew, take care of them. But then one thing led to another, and then, like I say, a half a life was still there in that apartment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you guys basically had to leave right away. Never yeah. thought you know, you know, never got a chance to come back. But but in between that, you know, from the time you you came, which you told us about with Ron Jacobs, till the time that you guys left, so much happened in between. You played in the PBA. You won the tournament in the PBA despite being an amateur team. You played in all these tournaments, and we were watching you on TV. Uh, but what would be your fondest memories, Jeff? I mean, you know, who are the guys that you remember? Uh, that you played with, played against, that made an impression on you? I mean, I mean, there's so many. I mean, and it's been so long ago. Here's this photo right here. Uh, you know, when me and Dennis was at our happiest moment in our lives, like all of us, even the ones in the, in the bottom front and Hector and everybody. Like I said, we were young kids, you know, new experience for all of us. Uh, but for Dennis and myself being from the United States, you know, every day, everything that happened was a challenge, you know. Uh, the jokes that the Filipinos would say, you know, <laughs> just walking down the street. And we're just, just taking it all in, but we're feeling great about us being there because the Filipinos really showed a lot of hospitality to us, you know. 
we used to go to people's houses uh, that worked for us or just we met on the street, you know, and, and they were uh, uh, poor people, but they wouldn't offer us anything they had, shirt off their backs, you know, and, and that's one thing I really remember just how kind the Filipino people were to us during those times. The bottom picture, I remember that one was in the hotel. And, you know, it might have been after a win. And we might have been getting ready to go out somewhere. And that's a good picture. You know, that's what I'm saying. We were all tight at times. It wasn't all the time we were tight. You know, me and Dennis and, you know, Willie might run off and do our thing. But, uh, but yeah, that picture right there tells the story that, that we were happy, uh, winning, growing together, doing the things that we really needed to do to uh, um, to, to to achieve our mission. Because so our mission uh-huh. was, and it was clear, you know, to uh, bring back prestige to the, to the Filipino basketball. You know, we all knew that, and so that's why we all held each other accountable for what we did or didn't do on the court or off the court, for a matter of fact. And, and we, was, we were accomplishing those things. So we were at a moment in our career where we had already jumped some hurdles and got through those, you know, some tough moments and, and uh, teams we had played. So we were confident in what we had, and we knew if we just stuck together as a team. Some would come in, others would go. You know, I don't think Alan Hyde did was with us on that yeah. one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it might be one here, one there. But it wasn't a lot of different changes. Chip even wasn't with us at that point as, as well. And yeah. uh, but we got all the things we needed to, uh, to be prepared for, like I said, the Williams Jones Cup at the right time, you know, the World Games, the ABC, uh, Championship, you know, uh, to win those three uh, events in the, in the same year is impressive, you know, oh, yeah. uh, for anybody. Alone for a first year Filipino team really making a, a stand on the world, on the world market, you know, on the world stage. And, and, and having, you know, like I say, Italy and France and uh, Canada. You know, scared of us, literally. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, worried about us because they do. Yeah, they sit up in the stands, you know, and they watching us beating teams. They just beat, and we beat them by, you know, 15 points more than them, you know, handling it. And so they didn't know what, what, what to expect. What the, about that Dennis is not a true center. Dennis is only 6'7", you know, yeah. at that. I'm six. You know, look with me at six eight at times, but I'm six three. You know, with the shoes maybe six four, and it's maybe six eight, and we're going up against seven footers. You know, uh, and at my size, with the uh, the Americans and the William Jones stuff. You know, Hector's guarding him, and he's as tall as I am. You know, so we out man from point guard to the to, to the center, and right, they can right, figure right. out what yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah, but, so, but look yeah, at you, you're jumping, you're jumping at center. Yep. Look at that photo yeah. on the right side. You're, yep. you're jumping at center uh, against much bigger guys. Yes. Because Dennis, yeah. Dennis yeah. isn't even jumping at center. He was always exactly. you. He was always yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. I'm an athlete, and I love that Dennis was like, you know, you jumped this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dennis was being his mood, and I said, I got it. Don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, but like I said, we took out to each other, you know, we talked it through. And that's how you get through a lot of things, you know. If you're not feeling good that day, you know, I've done that all my career. I say, hey, take this guy for a couple minutes and the rest. I got him. You know, we used to tag team uh, with Francois and uh, in the PBA, you know, a one two punch, and he didn't know where it was coming from. So, so yeah, but that, I, I still have that picture, you know. And, in my archives and I look at it all the time and and those were really best moments. 
Jeff, I asked this question of Dennis when he also guested on our show. What was your first impression of Chip Engelen when he first joined uh, NCC? I know what he said. white boy. Well, how he going to help us? <laughs> oh. You know, that was Dennis' first impression. <laughs> no, but uh, for me, I, I never uh, judge a book by its cover. You know, I just said, hey, what's up, Chip? How you doing? Hadn't heard of him, you know, coming out of California, supposed to have been a shooter. You know, I wasn't big at, uh, at following basketball, you know, the magazine, who's who, you know, uh, it really didn't matter to me. That's why I think it probably helped me because I just did what I knew I could do. And I did, I practiced hard enough to whatever was coming my way. I can't do any more. I'm ready or I'm not ready. So I didn't have to prepare for anybody. And then once I saw Chip shooting around, I, uh, um, you know, me and Jake is talking. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah this, is, this, this guy can shoot. He said he's going to take some pressure off you. You know, free you up to, you know, be the slash and do the everything. Uh, free the, for Dennis to go one-on-one if they want to. Dublin, they kick it out to Chip, and he started shooting. And of course, you know, he got a Jerry West jump shot. I mean, it's just a perfect jump shot, you know. My son had that jump shot. I was like, oh, perfect rotation, perfect, you know. And so, but he's a real shooter. And but then when he was off, then it would, <laughs> then it would let him know because a pure shooter. They'll make 15, but on that day they off. They missed them first 15. They're not going to stop shooting now. You're going to have to take them out or not give it to them. So that's uh-huh. their mentality. You're going to keep shooting. So, uh, you know, they know how to how to manage them. So, you know, if he misses three or four in a row, okay. Depends on how he missed them. You know, you can tell if it's barely missed it and it was just off. But when the shooter's off, his, his shot is all over the place. And you know it. So you give him a break, to, give him a breather, let him sit down and relax, and then put him back in. And uh, you know, they, they came through in the William Jones stuff. Because Dennis and myself were, I was hurt, sick a little bit. Dennis had that swollen ankle. And, and we were limited on what we can do. But yeah, we were fighters and warriors. We're still going to be out there. That's what Jake knew. We weren't going to give up. Anybody else would have said, Coach, I can't play, you know. But that's when, when I say I gave my heart and soul to the Philippines, Dennis and I, that's oh. what I'm talking about. She oh, yeah, yeah. we're going to be doing what we can. We didn't have the ego because I can't be at my best that I need to score 20, so I'm, I'm going to bail out. No, if I score one point to help this team win, just my presence – that's what I was going to do. Speaking of shooters, yeah. but, uh, speaking of shooters, this is one of the greatest who ever uh-huh. played in the PBA, Ricky Brown. Uh, what, what do you remember about him? Uh-huh. Ricky was, uh, uh, I don't know what to think about Ricky. <laughs> His personality was, he was like, a, with me and Dennis used to call him the secret agent. Because he would never tell you what he's doing or what you're going you know, it was always secretive. Can I, hey, come here. Can I talk to you? You know, pull you to the side. But uh, his game on the court, Ricky, yeah, I played against him at Pepperdine. So he knew me. I knew him. Uh, uh, you know, he had that Puerto Rican game from New York, you know. Uh, strong little guard, get a shot off fast against taller people. You know, like you say again, just a real shooter. He, he would light it up. You know, and you wouldn't think. He wasn't fast, he, you know, didn't jump high, wasn't tall. So, you know, how do you get these shots off against, you know, bigger defenders, bigger people? Because he thought about it and thought about it and worked on it and worked on it. And he had it down to a science. All I got to do is get it off before you get there, and that's it. He had the most, one of the quickest release that I've seen in, 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 in a lifetime. And that was his key. He had to get it off quick. You know, he had to get it off. And he did. He made a quick move, and that ball was gone up in the air. 
but most of the time it was dead. I'm looking, I see Willie Pearson at the back behind you. Yeah, this, this was the original, 90, yeah. yeah. 1981, 81. right? Yeah, yeah. But the, the one on the right is about 1984 yeah, already. Yeah. Because Ricky's yeah. in great taste, and then and Jeff's with Norther. I, I, I'd like to ask you. I'm sorry, Jeff. Yeah, I'd like to was, ask you. Uh, right Go ahead. Uh, because Ricky had a that where back there we got Bruce uh Bruce from uh Bruce, Bruce Collins was his name. He had been around in that early in that year. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and I think yeah. for the uh that year too. Um, OJ. Let, let's go back to nineteen eighty three. No, you you played in the ABC tournament and there was controversy there. Uh, because the Philippines, uh, uh, the games, the two games that you played for the Philippines were forfeited. What are your memories about uh, about that particular tournament? Uh, where were we in again? We were in uh, uh, the 1983 board. ABC tournament in Hong Kong. You played two games there. Uh, the winner of that tournament would go on and represent Asia in the LA Olympics. But after two games where you play, both games were forfeited because you were disallowed, because you were ineligible. Uh, what are what are your memories about that particular tournament in Hong Kong? Yeah, well, it was just a passing thing, like I said. Uh, the hype was, you started to hear the rumors. Uh, we were making a name for ourselves, you know, uh, outside of uh, the Asian world. So, you know, we were making a, a big mess in the Asian world. Yeah, China was in the protest, you know, whoever we played, because they were nervous. They knew it was going to be a different story. And uh, so, you know, with Steven and all of that, like I said, and I said, the boss knew it. He could have he could, uh, contested it and held it up for, for, for years, you know, or for months until they made us a, a decision. And it might have actually came down on in our favor. Like I said, you got the right to put naturalized citizens on on the on the team. And if it's by president or bloodline, it, it wasn't really clear what a naturalized citizen was. So uh, you know, I guess we bailed out and that was a disappointing appointment for us, you know, after training so much. Um, but we were pleased just uh, to be there, with, and we were definitely ready. You, you look at that team. Yeah, any Asian team, no, they didn't have a chance. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. well, speaking of national team, that's uh, Naning Valenciano, right? Yeah. yeah. And you, uh, Jong, Tonichi, Tonichi, Teddy, Teddy Alcorero. Who are the other two? Dennis, and Nisha, right? Dennis. Oh, no, no. Ah. Uh, Johnny Nash and uh, Ted were, they were from, uh, uh, Johnny Nash played at Arizona State. Okay. And Ted, Ted was at the University of uh, San Francisco. So they brought them in. Uh, they were trying out to see what was going on. What tournament was that? Do you guys remember? Because I don't remember. Well, John, no. Coach Jong is still there. So this could probably be uh, 83, 80, 84? 83 yeah. or 84. That's right. Maybe uh, the ABC. Yeah, maybe. Maybe definitely ABC. Yeah. Uh, that's right. in Brunei. Might have been the tournament in Brunei. I, I'm not sure which one that was. Those yeah. two were part of the national team. Yeah. Because it wasn't I don't, I don't remember those guys on the right. So. Yeah, because it wasn't a, 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 what was it, a sanction. Uh, Olympic style event because I don't think those who played with us did anything that that mattered as far as us uh, being a team. You know, it might have been an exhibition game somewhere or a tournament where, but it had nothing to do with our run to uh, to uh, playing in the world game, qualifying yeah. here or there. So those two guys didn't know that they weren't on any of those teams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. but it, it must have been some important tournament because all you guys were all dressed, you know, uh, alike, and <laughs> you had that match, right? You had a, a match with a Philippine flag, so we were traveling first class, representing the Philippines for sure. 
Is that Johnny Hegwood? Who uh, was uh, Johnny Nash and Hegwood? Hegwood? Yeah. Is that Hegwood, yeah. the, the one that uh, right most? Yeah, to the right. Yeah, that's Hegwood. Y'all don't remember what the, the I, I don't know. Were you born, Charlie? <laughs> this may be in Hong Kong. This may be in Hong Kong, the ABC tournament. Yeah. Yeah, this, this might, might be Hong Kong. I'm not, mm -hmm. Can't say for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, Hegwood, he would shoot them high art shots. He, he was a left hander. I mean, he would just shoot it to the moon, and it, you know, that was his shot, that's the underneath the basket. And it would go in. Uh, he had a weird shooting style, you know. Johnny Nash, you know, could do everything. He was supposed to be the, the, the um, Magic Johnson. When he went to Arizona State, I was at Loyola, so I knew Johnny coming over. Uh-huh. And then, okay. yeah, I broke his ankle the first day. My high school coach took us down there to watch, uh, watch him. He was at Arizona State for the first time. It was a game opener, and we're walking in. Got there a little late from Tucson. It was in Phoenix. And we're walking down the stairs, going to our seats. And I'm looking at the court. He goes up for a simple rebound, comes down, boom, pops out of the side of his ankle. Wow. I mean, oh. and, yeah, still around. I mean, not nobody would step on anybody's foot or anything, but when he came down, it just snapped in the middle of his leg, you know, wow. where his calf is. And so wow. that set him. Down, like, like, that's what I'm saying. And he was, you know, destined to, to make the NBA, you know, because he had all the skills. He was about six, 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 seven, big guard that can shoot. Uh, magic style that comes from, uh, go from, uh, from one end to the other, you know, flashy, passes. And so when I saw him there, he had recuperated and, and, and he was playing well, but he wasn't the same guy, you know, that, uh, Arizona State was expected. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you remember, you, uh, Jeff, you remember a lot of your teammates, of course, all the guys that played on that entity, where, whether they were from America or the locals. How about in the PBA? Do you remember, were there certain players on the opposing team that you remember stood out for you? And then, you know, that you know that you would, you would be tough. Uh, you, you had to play tough to challenge them. Like, I'm sure you remember Robert Jaworski. You know what happened? Who else do you remember from, from the locals? Yeah. From, I mean, uh, Ferdinand, I mean, Fran, the, the skinny uh, post guy. What's her name? Uh, Juan Fernandez? Ramon Fernandez. Right, Ramon Fernandez. Like I said, by face, I remember a lot of, but the names, they just stay at Stacey these days. Because I do go back and uh, I've watched a lot of the videos, you know, the finals and, and what have you of uh, when we played. Um, but yeah, yeah, I really couldn't tell you a lot of their names, but I know them per, you know, per se, and I definitely remember them. But there was a guard and uh a player on each team. Like they, they gave us fits. But I, I, I say that like we were, we were supposed to be the winners, but no, we gave them fits. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because we were, we were the amateurs, but we gave them fits and actually beat them. Yeah. But, uh, but, but yeah, they made us better, you know, uh, using their experience to, uh, to help us. Uh, like I said, Ron Jacob, to this day, like I say, I still mimic myself after him and how I get my team prepared. You know, I put them in some of the toughest tournaments. You know, if we lose, that's fine, but I want to play in tournaments that's going to challenge us. You know, get beat by 40. You know, now I have a reason to say this is why we go back to work. You know, if we win, we still got work to do. You know, because it's a consistency. You got to stay at the top of your game. So we were, we were taught, like I'm saying, that's why that team, all those teams that we were on in the, in the Philippines, we were uh, groomed and mentally challenged to win. 
You know, we practice it three days, I mean, three times a day for uh, six months. We born and lift weights, you know, play, I mean, shoot around, go over drills in the morning, lift weights in the afternoon, then we have a scrimmage game, you know, and we had to go hard. It wasn't no taking a day off. And, uh, and, and, and Manila, with all that sweating, wow, man, you're killing us. But we're in the best shape of my career ever, you know. I mean, I was really, I could run rings around anybody. I could run all day, hard, play defense all day, go to two overtimes, and then skip a beat. That's how we beat the, the United States in the uh, Williamstown Cup when we made that. Jeff, do, you remember, do you remember that game? Uh, I'm sure you remember Robert Jaworski, the playing coach of, uh, of Hinebra. Do you remember that game where you accidentally elbowed him uh, in the face and, you know, blood came out and he had to be rushed to the hospital? And then he came and you guys were up big and then he came back like Willis Reed and he inspired uh, uh, Hinebra to that win over, over you guys. Do you remember that particular game? Of course, I can have to get that. <laughs> the never say die moment, but uh, but yeah, I remember. Like I said, but those those were great moments. Like I said because he was uh, revered, you know. We knew it, you know. Uh, that's all they talk about, you know. He was the guy. Uh, uh, so so we 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 knew who he was. And and uh, and when I got him, I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> you know, I really did because you know I didn't get him on purpose, but it wasn't even a matter. You know, uh, but he took it well. But but everything changed after that. You know, uh, I think it put a fear in in the whole gym. Uh -huh. You know, because uh, 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 they didn't know how he was going to respond. You know, he might have came back and, and stabbed me in the back. I don't know. <laughs> but they knew he was going to come back and, and get some kind of revenge. So everybody was waiting for that. But he had enough respect for me. He did. He came back. But with that fear in everybody, the game changed, you know. Uh, so they're looking for some, something to happen for him to foul me hard or foul them hard. So that changed the game. So we got uh, complacent. In that moment, if you remember breakaway, I told Dennis this. <laughs> I got a breakaway, I see, uh, and I'm going to my. I see him coming. You guys know me. It ain't down the week. I'm dunking on him. I don't care who. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I, he come running full speed. I just take me out. So I, I jumped. He barely put his hands on me, and I, I threw it up off the rim. I'm lucky I got the foul because it really wasn't a foul because he barely touched me. But even the ref thought he was going to get me hard, you know. And that was the first time I <laughs> kind of gained in. And you know, I was like, no, this guy, I don't know. I've heard a lot of stories about him. He was coming to get me, son, you know. So I kind of flew the lay up. But got the foul call, so, you know, he bat, that saved me. So I made my two free throws. But, but that was the only time, you know, a guy coming at me like that made me think about, you know, the consequences that I went up in there. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the mystique yeah, of yeah. Jaworski, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, Jeff, how did the PBA yeah. experience, your free conferences playing in the PBA, help you as far as dealing with the hostilities in the, in the ABC tournament? Like, this one was held in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, you had to go up against China. Um, uh, obviously, fans were not really, uh, were cheering for the Chinese in the finals. How did that help you? Right. Right, because of those type of moments. We, we become the next like thing. You saw after over a season, we became the first, you know, in the, in the PBA. Yeah, we were knocking them down just as well. As they so, so we didn't back up. We came at them just as hard as they did. Allen, I can say, I see videos where, you know, they came at us. Hector wasn't backing down. You know, Tanichi wasn't even back after we got a good grip on our making them have respect for us, you know? And so that part of it helped us to become men against kids. Because there wasn't no national team playing like that, mm -hmm. you know? 
we played as a national team, executing, doing those things like all the national teams play. So we can match any with that, with our offensive skills and, and playing as a team. But that brought us to a, I don't care, each national team might have a bully, but we weren't going to let nobody bully us as a team. And, and that's what the people installed in us. I guarantee you, those are the reasons why we won. Because, you know, any day of the week, they, the national teams, you know, the old vets come in and, you know, some of these national teams, you know, it's life and death if they win. So they start banging us and, you know, pushing that, thinking we were going to back off. But we went, we went right back at them. We gave us, um, we took as good as we gave, you know. We went back at them and, uh, and we had skills to, to do it and play. See, that was the, the test. We, we could manage our control mm-hmm. under, under tough, you know, because of the PBA, because every night it was a tough circumstance. I don't care who we played, whether we were up 15 or down 10, them guys were men trying to get their paycheck. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you guys just fought through that. I'm, I'm wondering, Jay, which tournament is this? Because you have uh, Dean Dopomaren, yeah. uh, Jerry Godinier is there already. After part, this was 85 already. Yeah, this must have been 85. Maybe the Sea Games. I'm not sure. Maybe the Sea Games. 85 Sea Games. Uh, Southeast Asian Games, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was I never in... knew that Dingo played with these guys. I, I, oh, yeah, Dingo did. Yeah, at, at the end, Alvin Teng, yeah. Dindo Pomara, Jerry Cordinera, Jeffrey Graves. Yeah. Also, the Lins, yeah they, came, they came in at the end. Daningo yeah. Linsano, that's, that's towards the end. <laughs> yeah, that was down the end. I turned the page. You know, Alf is in there. Uh... There was some tournament. Was it a tournament in Brunei? Because like yeah. I said, we're going everywhere, playing and uh, <laughs> doing this, this this little ride of ours. But yeah, once Allen got there, we were down to the yeah we were close to the end at that point. Uh, yeah, those are the guys that finished off uh, the ESM boy, Davis uh, and Kai Big Elmer. Yeah, Nixon. Yeah, that was it. That was the final stretch there. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, Jeff. I just need to ask you uh, on an individual uh, talent level, who impressed you more, Allen or Samboy? Uh, different positions, you know. Samboy, you know, he's doing things that nobody in the world can do with the way he talks. <laughs> 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 to the floor shooting a jump shot. I'm like. Falling back, this guy, I mean, wow, that was impressive. And that's what threw Americans off. You know, he would kick you and fall back and, and it'd be all net or off the back. You know, he had a game that you cannot teach and you try not to teach yourself. <laughs> that was the thing, but there was a natural instinct that he had. I don't know where, like I say, those are things that are, that are just in you. You know, some people have an IQ about the game, I did it in every country, you know, I have it, you know, but I actually had it and I did the work of, of the basic stuff as well. But yeah. they see the game in a different light, the angle in a different light, you know, because he went in there and he would go into that rim and throw it up backwards without looking and it would go in and that's like, wow. And you thought the first time he might have did it, okay, that's a lucky shot. But then, he, I mean, that's a <laughs> shot he actually trying to do, you right. know? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And what about Alan? And they called him the Skywalker. That's why they called him the Skywalker. He would hang in there until you come down and then he'll get it off. And he wouldn't really fall on the ground. That was the other amazing part. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the trigger man, you know, he, he, like I say, he was just a straight trigger man, you know. He was always ready to shoot. He had to... <laughs> He was born to shoot that ball, you know, left-handed, that throws you off. So that was another advantage. And the way we trained, you know, Ron Jacobs uh, and everybody, we got it right. We trained and trained with confidence, you know, and, and we trained with defense, coming at you, coming at you, getting you prepared for that that guy running at you and you only got a second to get it off. You know, that's what I do a lot of. And uh, it's like NBA. If you don't, I used to say, if, if he doesn't block it, it's good. I'm going to wait to the last second. I'm not going to panic. 
and that's the way you know he was groomed, and that's how he understood the game, you know. Because I remember all of those guys, they didn't start out like that. <laughs> like I can say that it was a process, and and that's why Jake had the uh, whereabouts to uh, to us in uh, the NBA summer league when we went down there. And, and and to bring in all these teams, you know, with with all Americans, so those guys can get used to, you know, six nine guys jumping at them, athletic, you know, blocking their shot, knocking them down, which happened, you know, always a piece of cake, you know, and uh, and so they learn, they learn watching me and Dennis, you know, like I say, that was our mission, you know, we were over there playing, but we were also over there teaching. You know, they learned as playing with them how to play the game, but us correcting them when they make a mistake here and there on the defensive coverage or even on the offense, what they should have did or what they shouldn't have did. Might have passed it to me. I said, that one you said in the past that should have faked it to me and kept going, you know, because he got his uh Thinking that they had to give it to me like the import. No, no, this is not that. This is team basketball. You know, you make the right pass when you're supposed to make the right pass. You don't give it to me so I can score 40 points just because. No, this is this is what Jake was all about. And then that's why Dennis is a perfect fit for that team. Because if you had somebody over there that was all about their points, it never would have been the same. Yeah. And Dennis was the best team player, unselfish guy in the world. I scored a lot of points, but I was unselfish. I, like I say, Jake had to force me to keep shooting because I would pass on the dime, you know, to whoever's open. Pass up my shot for them, you know. Uh, Chip, was, Chip was a shooter, too, just like him and, and Kai did. So if you pass to them, you might as well say he's shooting that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> but go get the rebound, right? Yeah, go get the rebound. But every now and then they would pass because – when they were off, we taught them how to um, to be winners. Like I say, you know you're off. We'll just keep shooting. When you go up in the air, you see me cut into that basket. Don't always think I'm going to make that shot, especially when you're having an off day. So, you know, every now and then they would drop it in. And it'd be at the perfect moment. It'd be like, wow, okay, he gets it. Because I want him to shoot because he's such a good shooter. But if you're not on it, drop it down to help this team win. We even got both of them to get them back and play defense. But Chip used to, I mean, I didn't just get so mad at Chip for running out, you know. The, the shot goes up, me and Dennis and, and everybody down there fight for a rebound. As soon as we get it, Chip's at half court yelling. And he's like, no, no. He'd be like, Chip, don't throw it to him. <laughs> they can come back and play defense. Oh, so, hey, hey. Well, it might have been a long rebound and he's from there, so and we did. We talked to him and, and, and expanded it to him that way. Like a couple three times it was a long rebound, so they got another chance and they made the shot. So so, you know, we all played together and we helped one another. It was a family. And that's what uh, hurt me so bad that I took thirty eight years for me to go back and shoot. All those guys, you know, and a couple of them in that picture aren't really from the war. And I really, really felt that our friendship and our bond was like no other, really. That, I mean, that's a real storybook in it. That's the that's a, that's a make of a, a, a movie. I mean, really, uh-huh. if somebody really documented, you know, that is a movie in the making because... We had it all, you know, from, from, from the 12 Americans, you know, like, from them going to pick Jake for the, uh, first of all, then bringing Dennis and I coming in there. Then we, you know, going and uh, looking for talent after the first year, the protests and all of that, all the way to the end, where the, uh, the president in the lead, we have in the lead, you know, it's a story worth telling, to tell you the truth. And all yeah, yeah, the little things. Definitely. Hong Kong. Definitely. That's the one for the, for the history book. A teachable moment, to tell you the truth. 
how you come you together. Had, you guys had a great run, Jeff. What what a run it was! But as you as you know, we've talked about it. It it suddenly came to an end simply because of the political change here in the country, and the basketball team for some reason got affected by that, which is crazy for me. But uh, so you guys. The team was blown up. You never got to come back. You, as you said, you left your things here. Didn't even get them back anymore. And you had to move on, obviously. How, how long did it take you to, to say, hey, I got to do something? So eventually you went to South America, I think, and, and then eventually to Mexico uh, to move on with your, with your career. So what happened to you after that? I mean, did anybody ever call you to come back for, for as an import or any NBA team, or PBA team? No, I mean that that's why I say it was the perfect storm. <laughs> I mean in, in the sense that then take Dennis and I long to go and get a job. Hell, we were qualified players, hell. So anybody in any country wanted us. So that's that that's why they had a excuse not to call us or say they, they called us but oh just man in Argentina. Oh Dennis is down there, you know. So that gave the uh, politicians or the higher up in the organization a pass to, you know, to say, oh, well, no, Jeff's over there. You know, we tried to call him, whether they did or not, uh, but I never received a call. Because you got to understand, we're at the top of that game. So you know, it didn't take me long. I came back and uh, they had a six, five and under league. I went and played in that. I had just started that, you know, for six, six and under, like the Philippines has. You know, uh, I went to a tryout of 20, 200 people there, and, you know, all these big time uh, college kids. And I've been gone for eight years, so nobody really knew who the hell I was, you know. And I've been seeing these guys on magazines, you know, the top of the notch. That's probably going NBA. And I had to go through a, a, a tryout. This, this team was in Fresno, California. Jay called me, uh, I mean, Jim White said, You want to go down here and have a tryout? I said, sure. So every day it was cut in half, you know. Uh, so I'm lasting and lasting, you know, these names I, I, I've i heard of, you know, from these big time schools. Uh, uh, and uh, so, you know, we get down, we get down, but then we're down to price 30. And uh, so next day it was only going to be down to 15. So. Uh, we're doing a defensive drill now. So I get out there, you know, where the, everybody's going, people were in front of me, and it was my turn up, you know. So you're supposed to deny the ball, and if he backs door, you're supposed to recover and, and, and don't let him get that either, you know. Uh, so it was a, a decent uh, American black guy. I can't remember his name right now. But uh, he was NBA bound, you know, so... I just happened to went through mines, and when I turned around, it's my turn to get on defense. I see him, you know, so it's like, okay, let's play. I'm defense. I grew up playing defense. Hell, I played you know, some of the best uh, offensive players in the world. So that was just what I do. He didn't know that, you know. So we start, and he's trying to get get the ball. And he's going, taking me out, trying to, you know, get the ball. And, the uh, assistant coach throws it. I get a hand on it. It goes out of bounds, you know. He does it again, and, and, and now he's trying to push and get away, and somehow I get it again. So he backdoored me, and I get that one. And the coach finally said, he yelled, he said, okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. So I'm thinking I did something wrong because he knew all these players from the uh, CBA. That was the league, like the G League now. Uh, so they're all in the CBA. And so I'm, you know, I'm waiting for what he's talking about, and he's coming towards me, and 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 you know, I'm trying to figure out did I do something wrong? Did I have my head not turned quick enough on the back door? And uh, he grabbed me, you know, by the shoulder, and he said, uh, he said, this is how you're gonna make this thing. He said defense. He said defense wins championship. You know, he said, this guy knows how to play defense. That's what I'm looking for. You know, so, you know, made me feel good. Everybody's looking at me, you know, they kind of clapped and stuff, you know, but clapping me that, yeah, my job may not be, I might not get that job if that's what they're looking for. And at the end of the day, I did get the job out of, 20, I mean, 200 people. 
because the scoring was easy. I mean, I always say that to my players. Scoring is easy. You can learn to score. Defense is desire, heart. That's a winning attitude. You want to win when you just want to get uh, rebounds and play defense. And that's what Dennis and I both brought there. And we uh, we could score, but the defense is what kept us there. Because like Jake said, there was a lot more talented uh, guys they were looking at when we were trying out everybody offensively, you know, because I wasn't really – I could score, but I wasn't just a straight scorer. But I could stop people. So, you know, he told the boss, yeah, there's some people here that's probably better at offensively than these two. But no, you won't won't get a better teammate, unselfishness, and give a hundred percent than Jeff Moore and Dennis Steele. And so that's how we ended up staying there. But uh but the road was, was long and hard. Those two teams right there, that was in the uh that was the all star game on the left side, uh when I came to Mexico. and on the right that was when I played on the South League in Mexico. I was actually uh, on an island, East Lady Mujeres. So, you know, I, I had uh, a paid job to be on the island, you know. So I enjoyed my life, played hard, you know. I was, uh, for nine, 10 years, my first 10 years in Mexican basketball. That's why I told you I was above everybody coming from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. I was in every in the first 10 years. I mean, the first nine years. You know, every finals with six different teams, I could win. I had to win and I had to lose. My first year, I'm going to 40, 50, 60. Because nobody could do anything with me because I come from the Philippines where I had to do everything. National team got me prepared, had the skills, and then the toughness that the PPA got me, nobody else could touch me. They used to call me, because uh, uh, they were fouling me a lot in, in, in Mexico, but I was getting a foul in one. It wasn't nothing like me not to falling on my head in the Philippines. <laughs> they thought they were hitting me hard, but that wasn't nothing to me. I get the foul and the bucket. So, so yeah, the Philippines helped me a, a hell of a lot to uh, travel the world and expose who I am and, and what I could do. They really prepared me for the rest of the world. You had, you had crazy stats when you were in the PBA. You can see below it says you played 102 games, 24.2 points per game, almost 16 boards, four offensive, three assists, almost two blocks, 38 minutes on 60% shooting almost from the field and 76% almost from the free throw line. So you're saying that this just backs up what you just said. You did everything. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, but if you read it right, no, that's at uh, 50%. What, is, what was the shooting percentage? 59.7. Yeah, from the field. I mean, that's yeah. just intelligent. I didn't take bad, bad shots. Uh-huh. You know, that's what I used to do all my life. I didn't take bad shots. I, and I got a lot of my shots from kicking. You know, me and an American had a problem with that uh, one year. He was like, oh, you and, you know, the other guy's name was Al Smith. He's like, y'all shooting all the shots, you know. And he had played with New York Knicks for a little bit, you know. He's a big man, 6'9", Kenny Green. And uh, I said, Kenny, I'm not shooting as much as you. He said, yes, you are. Y'all, y'all ain't passing it to me. I said, Kenny, let's go to the scoreboard. I mean, score sheet. You know, he had 20, 20 shots. I had 17. I got mine from the free throw line, you know? And I got mine from foul. I mean, shots he shot, and I got rebound and put it back up. So I didn't shoot all these shots. See, I played the complete game, so they got confused on what it was. And those numbers really showed. But that was all my career. I did it all, you know? Uh-huh. And, and I loved doing that was the key. I love helping other people get, you know, being there to recover them. I didn't blame anybody, so so that was it. That picture right there, that was in Mazelan. I'm, I'm an assistant coach there. And um, I feel like I'm saying farewell, but no. <laughs> I got my fingers up. I'm but but the no, more no. more important thing, the, the thing that Jay wants to know is, did you meet those two ladies in red? 
no, I didn't mean, I knew him. I didn't, I, <laughs> no, that was kind of special rah rah girl. But no, I was all business. You know, I was always a dance, so I'm just coming through that. Uh, giving them a championship. See, I did that from the assistant coaching job. See, I, I do have skills. I hate those things. They never call me, man. I got skills as a coach. I'm Jacob, so he goes, really? No. I got a knack for reading the game exactly how it is. When you take this guy out, how you, how you uh, defend this guy, what kind of setup we go out. And I guarantee you, most of the time it works. You know, I'm very, very good at that. And that's another gift I had that I never had a chance to use in the Philippines. Not just that great player. I'm locked in on, on let's say I'm a psychologist by nature. I read what's going on, how we got this guy, what we got to do, how we going to get him frustrated. But then that's a, a, a story for another chapter. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You know, maybe... Well, that, that's an advertisement right there, what you just said. So we're going to spread the word about that coaching thing, Jeff. Let's see. Oh, Let's wow. see if anything can come out of that. But let's look at the next photo, Carly. I, I know it's a, it's a special one. This is just recently. Uh, for everyone's Very information, nice. Jeff was here for the FIBA World Cup. That's so right. he was able to meet with old friends like Norman Black and Jong Wei Chico. And, of course, you flew to Hawaii to meet that guy in the cap. His name's Willie Pearson. He was our guest also a couple of years ago on the show. And so tell us about that that uh, experience of coming back after so long and seeing all the guys there. It, uh, just on the plane itself, you know, because uh, I had t- taken that trip, you know, at least twice, three times a year when I was there. You know, we would come home every now and then. Uh, and it, it just gave me goosebumps, you know. And the closer we got, and, uh, you know, it just, it, it just, Moments of reflection. Once we start flying over the land, and I'm trying to look and see of um, places, you know, if I can uh, identify uh, uh, a building or something. But I couldn't. I couldn't. I was just looking at it. I was like, wow, it looks different than before, maybe. And then I find out I'm going to a different airport. You know, I said, this ain't where I, where I used to take off from. Uh, but yeah, it was just a whole body of emotions going through and uh, thinking about all the good times we had. And once we landed and got off, you know, we're in uh, the latest airport that they built, you know, brand new uh, to me and, you know, up to date. And so everything was different, but then it was the same. Once we got into, uh, you guys helped uh, pick me up. So, you know, once we got into the, to the truck. Uh, then I started asking questions, you know, uh, where did we live before? And it just was uh, the area. And some stuff started to become familiarized, but, but it was just so much that I, I couldn't take it all in. I was in places where before they said, yeah, this is so and so large, you know, this is a little city. And I knew it back then, but nothing like I, I remembered it. And, uh, even the uh, where they played, I couldn't believe that was the the, the dome where they fought the thrill in Manila. Yeah, I mean, really, he said we got out and walked, uh, you know, a block, and, and we went into a mall. And he said, "You're in it." And I'm said, "What?" I said, "No, that can't be that big spaceship out there that we used to drive to and we could see for miles away." He said, yeah, this is it. I'm like, man, you know, it was, once I got in and I could see, yeah, the things to see, but that was it. Wow, that was something else, really. That blew me out the water. I mean, we, I mean, we shed a lot of tears, in it, you know, sweat and tears and, and and just going at it, boy, that's when we first started. And, I, and like I was telling somebody, the guys that picked me up, I said, that was before Ultra. You know, Ultra. Yeah, yeah, y'all got four or five news. I said that was before Ultra. That was the one. You know, I was here before they even started building Ultra. You know, that was a new one for us. But but wow, there was there was something. There was something to behold, and ran across a couple people that remember me. So that was the, the special moment. 
And that there, uh, that's priceless. It really is. You know, all those guys there, you know. When I thought, when I first, I mean, I left them last, I was 28 years old. Uh -huh. 28. 28. 28. 28. Yeah, Janique was uh, probably about 22 or something like that. And then you, yeah. you see all these guys, you know, and then you got to reconnect with Heck and Franz and Tonici. You know, those are the guys, John, of course. We remember I took that photo of you guys at, at one of the games of for Gilas Filipinas, and uh, so and then the chip. How was chip after all these years? Yeah. Me? How was chip after all these years? Oh well, chip I've seen. So yeah, chip is chip, as, as they used to call him, Dookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dookie. Yeah, yeah. Dookie. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, but yeah, you know, I hadn't seen them in, in a couple of years, uh, especially since he went to uh, OKC. So, uh, you know, it's always good to fit, uh, see Chip, you know, he always, with the old, uh, utmost respect, you know, being in the NBA and all that, we are friends, you know, and that's how he treats me. He don't, it doesn't matter who's he, who's he in front of, you know, or who's he with. You know, that's a real friend, and that, that's what I'm saying. He just, you know, gives me my, my due respect because of what we've done, you know. Like I say, you don't forget the past, you know. The future, I mean, the present sometimes, we kind of forget the past. And the past is what got us to the future. And and then that group there, you know, uh, allowed all of us to go off and, and do some special things. See, I went around the world and, and did what they were doing there, you know, and I wish I would have had that option to be able to have done what I did with the people that, that knew me best as, in my career, you know? So uh, it was a real such moment. And the little uh, the young man in the middle from uh, <laughs> the Boston sidekick from NCC, he was yeah. the money man. Every time we paid, boy, we were happy to see him. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Jeff, when you saw really these, fun night. Yeah, yeah, Jeff, go, when go, you saw go, these go. guys, uh, did you uh, actually not recognize at least one or two of them because they changed uh, significantly? That I didn't anybody? recognize. I yeah, was there anybody here who you didn't recognize? No, not not that group right there. No, I knew them. Yeah, like I say, my the names, you know, I could forget. I never forget a face, but I know I knew them, and they were close to me. It wasn't like I just might have forget how to say his name or whatever. <laughs> all right. But uh, uh -huh. all of them, yeah, that was that was the crew. Uh, little bitty ass Hector, look at him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> throwing, well, he looks the same. He looks the same except for the white hair. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Look at Jerry. <laughs> Oh, Jerry, yeah. He feels like a little chubby Jerry. He always was. <laughs> but, uh, and John, he always, he always great here. John, I'm like, dude, you like, you got you. But, uh, but yeah, and then for us to sit around, you know, you remember I entered. Uh, doing dinner and in different groups, just joking about the past, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and truly, that was amazing. You know, it was a, only a, we knew, you know, at the time, and and we experienced. So, so it was always. And I just don't want it to be another. Well, it ain't gonna be another thirty years. I guarantee you that. <laughs> thirty oh, yeah. years before I see. It should not guys. be. It shouldn't so, be. It shouldn't uh, be. Yeah, thirty years. Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be saying a few years, I guarantee you. But uh, hopefully, we talked about maybe uh, 2025. You know, I'm coming out here and supported by y'all to, you know, take a change, get away from there, and meet down here, you know, and and, and do that. And uh, that would be awesome if they could come down here, take them a vacation, you know, and I show them around, you know, where they're put in new and where I kind of made my mark after that. That was the first, and this was the last, and there was many more in between. So that was the first long one. The last one I stayed at 
So they know me as I came from there and ended my career. They know me in the Philippines as I began my career. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah, we know you yeah. as one of the best. We know you as one of the best who ever played for the Philippines team. Exactly. Jeff, and, and what a career you had even in the PBA. You won that championship. And all those glory <laughs> tournaments, you, you, you win those, those uh, medals for us. And we're forever thankful yeah. to you for that. You know? So I want to let you know that I'm saying it here on the show, Jeff. I said this to you when we were together. But we thank you for your service, yes. definitely, for the oh, national oh. team. We hate how it ended. We do. We really do. But... Uh, Yeah, that's life. As you said, you moved on, and that, and now you're busy there in Mexico. You're holding basketball clinics. You're coaching kids, uh, working with young people. You know, I hope your player. You said a player of yours got injured the other night. I hope he's okay. So you know, so we wish you the best in all of that. And then we did make a call for support uh, for you. So hopefully, some guys respond to that, and we're gonna let you know to support your program over there in Mexico, uh, Jeff. Freeze. Oh, it freezes. It freezes, freeze. Jeff. Oh, mm. Yeah. No, he'll be back. He'll be back. Okay, yeah. uh, the connection will be there. But I'm looking at this picture. Yeah, you pinaka... Chi Pineda ba yan? Yeah, I think so. Eh. Okay. I think that's Pineda. Yeah. And then the guy on the... See, see Tony, Coach Tonichi is the one who looks the most the same man, from before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. Siya talaga eh. Coach Tonichi. Yeah. Eh. Diba? Kasi yung iba, medyo nag-gain ng weight na Peter, Alan, diba? Mm. Tapos uh, kahit pa paano, si Coach Franz, medyo bagets pa rin. Pero... Si Torichi, parang ganun pa rin eh. Sakto oh, pa rin yeah. yung katawan niya, you know? Ano ba? Ano nangyari kaya kay Jeff? Talaga nag-freeze na siya, no? Yeah. Kung kailan tayo patapos na. But I, I'm pretty sure he'll come back in. But what a great uh, session we've had. Obviously, we talked to here. He remembers Never Say Die. Yeah. Um, which is something we wanted to ask. There's some other questions on the comment box. We haven't been able to ask them. We're not sure if we'll be able to, but we'll try to, yeah. to do that. Even out of the show, no, we'll try to answer your questions that and you have. And former teammate Ricky Reloz is actually watching. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Ricky Reloz uh, uh, was watching and uh, some other guys. Aldo Perez, thanks Aldo to Robert Perez. Viola. Hey, guys, uh, just a call, no? Uh, so as we always say, mm -hmm. send us some stars. Send us some stars. That, that was a yeah. time capsule, you know? Let's start, that's a time capsule. That was brought to us by Fitbit. And uh, that uh, uh, helps everyone in the world get healthier from counting our steps to giving personalized insights on your heart rate and sleep patterns. Log your exercise, access great tools and content on the Fitbit Premium, all on the Fitbit platform. Check out the line of products on Fitbit.com. Feel the power. Time capsule po yan. At uh, sana papasok na tayo sa Twilight Zone. Ngunit wala yung ating guest right now. He's trying to reconnect. He'll be in in a bit. But, you know, um, so there were some questions. I had, there's a nice question kanina about bakit He's dead, but why is he dead? He's still, why is he see Steve Scholl? Why is he see Lingerfeld at seven? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we we'd love to ask Ron Jacobs why that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Coach Ron's no longer with us, but yeah, I guess you know, as Jeff said, they got the best players who could be team players exactly. and fit the system. And fit the system. So if it was a six-seven center instead yeah. of a seven-footer. That's probably the reason why, diba? Mm -hmm. So, so yun yun, eh, diba? I would have wanted to ask a speculative question, like how would the Philippine team do in the 1986 World Cup had they gone on to play there? Well, I'll tell you already what he's going to say. He's going to say, lalaban sila, diba? Yeah, I know. Papalag I know. sila. Uh -oh. That's what Jeff, kasi warrior nga. Talaga. So, uh, just, just to reiterate, no, uh, the, the statistics of Jeff Moore in the PBA, tinan mo naman yan. I didn't realize he played 102 games. Incredible. That's a lot. I mean, the haba ng halos. We've had the six, seven-year veteran guests here on the show who didn't play a hundred games. Yeah, diba? four conferences, four conferences. Oh, kaya nga. So okay. he played every, each every conference. Game. They, they made it deep into the playoffs, eh? including one championship. Right. So, right. 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 so we're just waiting for him to come back in, uh, so we can wrap up episode mm -hmm. 200. Thanks everybody for for supporting us for. For this many episodes, no. So this is the yeah. 200th episode. Thanks for all your support. We never would have guessed that we'd make mm -hmm. it to where we are. Uh, we have a couple more episodes for this year, 2023. We'll take, of course, our Christmas break soon, but we'll be back in 2024, and we'll still continue the show. Uh, how often we don't know, but uh, you know, we might adjust the schedule. We'll see. But you know, but in the meantime, let's think. You know, let's think. Uh, Uh, well, yeah, send us stars if you listen to us on Spotify. Mm -hmm. You can send us a five star rating or rate us, you know, with five stars. Marai salamat for that. Become our monthly supporter. 
And how can you do this, no? For four dollars and ninety nine cents or two hundred fifty pesos. Well, what you can do is you can uh, go to Spotify, click the description, scroll to the bottom, and click the link that says support this podcast, and then you can do that. The four ninety nine dollars or four dollars ninety nine cents rather, or two hundred fifty pesos, and we will love you forever if you do that. Become our monthly support. And globally balling Southeast Asia on Facebook. Please follow that. So you can see uh, tidbits from all the different shows on the Globally Volley Network. So let's take this opportunity and then to thank uh, San Miguel Corporation for being our you know, main sponsor. Um, and then together with uh, Tominugan Farm, with uh, Barrio Fiesta, and mm-hmm. with Fitbit, of course. We, we thank PBA Archives and uh, PH Sports Bureau sa lahat ng tulong nila for the photos and for the information that we give. And then batiin na rin natin yung mga nag, ano, nag-birthday you know, yeah. in the past week yeah. na yeah. pamilya ng, uh, ng AOB. Si Bernard Harris, ka-birthday ko yan. Onchi de la Cruz, Phil Cortez, Peter Naron, Ed Cordero, Paul Herrera, and of course, Prince Philip Cesar. Nag-birthday kahapon. Yeah, thank Happy you. Happy birthday Ed, sa mga kapamilya. Yeah, thank no, you, Ed Cordero, for the, for the magazines. Yeah. So, so sino yung nasa cover ng sa harap? Uh, Hindi importante yan. Yung importante na yung sports world. Uh, Marites de Hoya, I don't know. Marites de Hoya? Yeah, Tet Antiquera. Wow. Uh, I don't know. 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 I don't I Thank you, wow. Mr. Nero, birthday boy, for the magazines. Okay. Well, let's, let's see. If he's coming back in, I'm going to message him right now. Yeah. Paano na matay? Naubos na ba ito battery niya? Baka. Uh-uh. Ha? Hindi ba? So, How long ano pa bang... How here, uh, Charlie? When he was in Manila? Five days na ba? Seven days? Parang gano'n? No, no. Mga ten days yata siya nandito. Oh. So, he was able to watch... Jeff was able to watch uh, Gilas, a couple of Gilas games and a couple of US games at the FIBA nice. World Cup. Yeah, he was still Gila. here during the uh, knockout stages in Mo Arena. Uh, I, saw, okay. I saw him there. I, I can't remember if it, it was quarterfinals. Probably was quarterfinals. I, saw, I still saw him there. Okay. Mahaba ng biyahe niya. Baya Hawaii siya, no? Okay, he, he, yeah. he purposely went there yata to... See, to visit Willie yeah. Pearson eh. Willie yeah. Pearson yeah. Yung, yung binisita nga nakita natin ang photo nga kanina so yeah. nantayin natin siya bumalik may message ko na rin siya di ba in, in the meantime um, kwento-kwento muna ha? just for a couple of yeah. more minutes let's see no? or else we can we can do the the segment uh, the segments yeah. later on uh, UAP you know, tomorrow guys NCAA finals also yeah so lots of basketball PBA of course there's PBA, PBA games course, today yeah. I'll be there and then tomorrow as well. Um, ah, okay. Back to back pala. Arena. Yeah, yeah. So, hindi tayo makakalood ng pahing. Tomorrow, tomorrow right supposedly, right. yeah, tomorrow supposedly, uh, L.A. Tenorio, our former guest, will be making his comeback. Yeah. Yeah, we'll so, see. We'll see so tomorrow. He's been reactivated. So, yeah, that will be a big moment. No? For also, um, Hill Cortez is uh, reminding um, all the MD on oh, yeah, the reunion and Pampanga Dragons on December 7 in Pampanga, in San Fernando, Pampanga. The 25th, so remind, 25th uh, year 25th of, their, of the first of the ever, ever, the first ever NBA, NBA championship. That's right. So, yeah, may, may all tanong dito si, si Boss Guapo, may, may, may tanong, magka-champion hmm. na bang UP daw bukas? So, yeah. Sabot kami na sa Fana, dapat. That's not the bar. Oh, sige, sige. I don't want to jinx anything. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. Not tayo. <laughs> okay so wait. Uh, I actually believe mukhang na, nagka-problema na si Jeff, ano? Uh, yep. Tatawagan ko na lang. Guys, let's, let's, ano, let's... Uh, we'll probably record yung... At ano yeah, we'll just record the segments with, with Jeff. Uh, uh, say a proper goodbye also uh, yeah. on, a, on a future date, no? If it's okay with you guys. Kasi yeah. 
Di ba? Yeah. Mukhang ano eh. Na no response din sa mga messages eh. So baka namatay ng internet or something. So I guess uh, we cut short, no? Our uh, episode 200. You know, we've had deal with some difficulties like a fiesta going on in the background. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but you know, siguro ipatuloy na natin. We will end this. It's not in the books yet yung episode 200 namin. So, kumpletuhin namin ito, no? Um, para sa inyong lahat. Pero Jeff Moore, great stories. Nice, uh, what, a, what a nice career he had dito sa Pilipinas. Pati na rin sa Mexico. He's a, like a Hall of Famer yata siya doon. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, well, that does it. Siguro, no? Break na tayo. So, here we are. We're entering the twilight zone of our show. Uh, of course, once again, we'd like to thank Jeff for his service to the Philippine basketball uh, landscape. Did a lot of work for us here with Dennis Still, Chip Engel, and the rest of the NGC guys. Lots of what could have been in that story, of course. But, you know, maybe we'll save that discussion for another time. So, we entered the twilight zone. The first part of our twilight zone is called X's or O's. And it's brought to us by Tuminugan Farm. Uh, if you need to relax and unwind, why not rejuvenate and reconnect with nature? Right at the foot of the Kitanglad mountain range in Bukidnon. Choose from a wide range of accommodations like the farmhouse, the bungalow, the cottage, or the tulugan. Tuminugan Farm can accommodate entire families, groups of friends, backpackers, and even team building events. So if you want to relax and unwind and be there in uh, Bukidon, you can uh, go to tubinuganfarm.com or their a- Instagram or Facebook for more information. So book now and you can start your Mindanao adventure there today. Okay, Jeff, for X's or O's, I have a list of, of choices for you. So just uh-huh. choose. You don't, have to, you don't have to explain why you chose that certain guy or certain thing. Just choose, okay? okay? So let's go, down, let's go down the list. Jeff, number one, Steve Lingerfelter or Steve Shaw? Steve Shaw. Steve Shaw, okay, the big guy, okay. Bob Worthy or Bruce Collins? Oh, Rob Worthy for sure. Oh, Rob Worthy, okay, okay, for sure. Eddie Joe Chavez or Ricardo Brown? Uh, Ricardo Brown. <laughs> okay, Ricardo Brown. Franz Pumarin or Hector Calma? Now you're getting me in trouble, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to be kidding me. Hector, Hector, Hector Calma. Hector Calma. Okay, Hector Calma. Okay. Okay, how about this one? <laughs> Sam Boy Lim or Alan Kaidix? <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a, yeah, it's been right there. No, they both was excellent, different positions. I take either one of them. Either one, okay. That's a tie. That's a tie. Okay. How about this? You remember the young guy, Jerry Codiniera or Tonichi Ituri? Uh, Ituri. Tonichi, okay. You got to go with this. Yeah. How about this one? Elmer yeah. Reyes or Willie Pearson? Elmer, Willie? Uh, I go with Willie. Okay, Willie. Yeah, I go with Willie. You remember these guys you played against uh, some imports in the PBA? Michael Hackett or David Pope? <laughs> yeah, I remember both of them very clearly. Michael Hackett scored 100 points. <laughs> yep, 100 points. <laughs> I would take David Pope over him. Yeah. Tell you the truth, that? I would take David Pope over him. Yeah. David, David Pope, okay. David Pope, yeah, he was great. He, he passed away. Okay, how about this? Norman Black or Francois Weiss? Ooh, that's another one. That's like Hector and... <laughs> uh, that's like Sambo and Kai. No, okay, I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> Francois. Francois, okay. Francois, yeah. okay. Okay, you remember... Do you remember Boggs Adornado? What's his name? Boggs Adornado. You remember him? Oh, Peter? yeah, yeah. Okay, Bogs Adornado or Sonny Jaworski? Oh, I take Jaworski. So Jaworski, we can fight. Okay. <laughs> okay, how about the next one? Uh, these are the centers, the big guys. Abit Gidaben or Mon Fernandez? Oh, I take Mon. Oh, yeah, Fernandez. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. How about, yeah. Okay, 
No doubt, no doubt. Okay, how about these guys who used to guard you? Abe King or Philip Cesar? <laughs> neither one of them. They always neither. just style at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, neither one. Okay, I got you. Ginebra or Great Taste? Uh, great Taste, I was. Great Taste, okay. Manila Beer or Tanduay Rum? Oh, I don't even know Tandu, <laughs> the rum place. San Miguel beer, of course. Oh, San Miguel beer, okay. <laughs> SMB wins, okay. Magic Johnson or Larry Bird? Oh, that's, that's heads or tails, you know. Uh, but yeah, Magic. Magic, okay. Celtics or Lakers? <laughs> I'm a Laker fan. Lakers. Okay, Laker fan, all right. Mm-hmm. Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Oh, you act like there's a... <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't know that. Michael Jordan, man. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, some of these guys, they like the, they like the new guy. I mean, you know, I think I we're know, all fight <laughs> all the time with people. <laughs> okay, next, next. Coaching or playing? Who? Coaching or playing? Oh, oh, playing any day of the week. I ain't got to worry about nothing but me. <laughs> Coaching, right, you got to worry about me. It's a headache, I tell you. All right. Okay, and then the next one, we're supposed to have a slide for this. Okay, the next one is, let's go to the acting world. Samuel Jackson or Lawrence Fishburne? Uh, Samuel Jackson, yeah. Samuel Jackson, okay. And the last one is Al Pacino or Robert De Niro? Oh, that's that's another one of those, huh? Uh, Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Okay, Al Pacino gets it this time. And that's XSROs for episode 200 of An Eternity of Basketball. That was brought to us by Tuminugan Farm. Jay Mercado, it's your turn. Yeah, Jeff, I'd like to ask this question, and it has always been lingering in my mind. What would have happened in Barcelona, in Spain, had you qualified for the World Cup? Up to what place would the Philippines have reached in the World Cup in 1986? What? That is a dangerous question because we were on fire. You know, like I said, we beat teams like Italy, who have a lot of teams that have played in the previous Olympics. Mm-hmm. And we were prime, and I don't know where we would have landed, but I think we would have shocked the world for, for a lot of different reasons. We were on our way. I mean, top eight? eight? Oh, it's yes. possible, definitely. It's not even went further than that. Because that was a special team. I mean, you really got to look at that. Uh, Any way you look at it, we were on fire. We were doing incredible things. We had the perfect match, you know, combination. We all was on the same page. Uh, you know, we were young and energetic and just newcomers that bought into Ron Jacobs' sale of one team, one dream. That's it. Great answer. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, awesome. Jeff. Yes. Yeah, what might have been. Another what might have been there. Okay, mm-hmm. Sid Ventura, it's your yeah. turn. Okay, my question, Jeff, well, first of all, is brought to you by Barrio Fiesta, uh, Makati, Makati Branch. Uh, it's Christmas time, so go for there. Kare Kare and Crispy Pata. Okay, um, Jeff, my question for you. If you could have dinner with any basketball personality, uh, living or dead, you know, uh, someone you've met, someone you haven't met, could be a Filipino, could be an American. Who would it be and why? Uh, I'd probably say Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. Yeah, you're not you the person to say that. Yeah. Why? Yeah, why I'm, Kareem? He was just phenomenal throwing a sky hook from three-point land. I mean, really, who does that? <laughs> 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 what would you ask him? How does he do it? I would love to then from three point. I had a nice jump hook, but I ain't have no sky to tell you that. <laughs> you know, one of the all time greats, of course, Kareem. Yeah, not one one of them, of yeah. His legacy extends beyond the, the basketball court, of course. Exactly. exactly. Right, right. Okay, so that's it for that. That's Barrio Fiesta that brought us that. Okay, really good Barrio Fiesta, Crispy Pata. And the Kare Kare, I think you're next, Jay. You know, for, oh, no, Sid, you're next for that one. Okay, all right. So 
that that's those are the segments for this. But the fi- last and the final segment for episode 200, it's a segment called Hello Porky. That was the greeting that Joe Cantada, if you remember him, Jeff. Joe Cantada used to say that at the start of the start of the coverage. He'd say Hello Porky. That was his son, Porky Cantada. So okay. it's your chance now to 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 make your own greetings, to thank people, to acknowledge them, give shout outs. Uh, so don't uh, say hi to everyone that that you'd like to before we let you go. Yeah, no, first of all, like I say, um, my heart goes out to Sam Boy Lim's wife, you know, for this situation. I uh, didn't have a chance to go see him while I was there. So it was so short and fast. But, uh, but yeah, and everybody else, all, all the teammates, you know, Hector, you know, so we're at the, uh, the team reunion and those that, that weren't there, you know, Ryan Jacobs, I wish I would have had a chance to see him before he passed. It's a shame it took all these years to get back over there. And uh, I mean, those are my biggest uh, hard feelings, you know, that I didn't get a chance to, to say bye to certain people, alpha fellas. But, uh, but yeah, I just want to thank all the Philippine people that supported us. Like I said, for me as a young man, coming out of Tucson, Arizona. I mean, it was just amazing. The support we got in, in, in a foreign country, you know. We were truly uh, native sons by the time we, we finished our, our uh, eight year run. Dennis and I and Chip as well. Um, and like I said, it was truly home for me. And I thought I would uh, in my career there when we started. But that wasn't to be. But everything else, uh, I just wish him a lot of success in, in, in going forward in the basketball world. I had a chance to get a glimpse of him at the uh, World Games. And, you know, they have the talent, you know. But like I said, they, they got to figure out how to put it all together. You know, uh, I saw some things that I liked and saw some things I didn't like. Uh, and like I say, I'm invested in the Philippines doing, having success. You know, that's where we started. We pretty much put them on that track. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I had a great time. I loved it, seeing a lot of people. Ran across a few people just walking through the stadium. Of course, they remember the good old days. Uh, a lot of people didn't know who I was until someone said something. You know, of course, the days started to come back to, uh, to the forefront. Uh, but yeah, we're just happy and, and, and grateful to be here. And like I say, I want to wish all Filipinos, you know, Merry Christmas and a happy year, New Year, you know, from us here in uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And I would like to ask them, because I'm with my academy, I, there's a young man in the hospital right now. He broke his wrist, uh, you know, it's real bad. I saw the x rays, it came apart. and. Uh, out of his skin, 13 year old kid, and I'm just raising money for him and the academy to help kids like him. He comes from a poor family, uh, one parent household, you know, and I kind of took him in as a, a mentor, trying to guide all of these kids and give them a chance to live. Ron Jacob gave me that chance. You know, I stayed with him when I went to Loyola Merriman, and what he did for me. They've given me the building blocks to go out and be successful in what I did. They have confidence to be who I am, you know. Uh, gave me a, a different perspective on, on what life's all about. Mm-hmm. I do the same with the kids here. And I love it. Like I said, God has blessed me to survive uh, the pandemic. I really thought that was it. And, but I've been perfectly groomed for this academy because I have a, a wide range of personalities and uh, places I've been. I can relate to the rich, white, black, it doesn't matter. Like I said, and it comes so easy for me. You know, I turned to a, a private school that was soft and weak into this powerhouse in three years. No divisions in the third division, second division, first division because of the skills I have, you know, I'm not starting in the Philippines. So 
I'm grateful to the Philippines for what I was able to take away from there. But anybody who wants to donate, donate to my academy, Charlie, you have the information. Please get in contact with him or some of the teammates. They already have the information I reached out to them. But yeah, we could use your help. I would like to have this kid have a happy new year and don't have to have the headache of the bills, you know, so him and his mom can have a Merry Christmas. We don't have to struggle, at least not here, not right now, because he's a young kid on his way of being a great uh, basketball player, but he sent me an a, a audio. He's a rapper as well. <laughs> You know, and the rap is pretty good. I sent it to one of my friends that's in the industry in LA. But he's 13, he's rapping, so he's has, he has a future in whatever he chooses to do, but he has to be alive to be able to do it, you know, get out the streets and get out of uh, harm's way. So I just want to say uh, thank you for all the support you guys have given me. And anytime you want me, I'll talk up a storm, so just give me a call. <laughs> That's amazing. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you so much for your time and for telling us your story. And, and of course, now you're part of the AOB, AOB family, so we'll be in touch more often. And we're going to give a yes, shout sir. out, uh, ask for some help for that kid and then for your academy as well. And hopefully that brings out some stuff. Right. So, that's, so that's it, I guess. Uh, Jeff, you. thanks so much for coming on. Uh, episode 200. Uh, finally, you know, we're done with that. Uh, and I, I, we're going to announce who our next guest will be as soon as we can. Um, yeah. On behalf of my, my friends, Jay Mercado and Sid Ventura, I'm Charlie Kuna saying thank you to everybody for watching. God bless you all. Jeff Moore, take care, man. And we'll be in touch. Uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you yes, soon. Yes, sir. Bye. All right, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. May guest pa tayo. We'll just finalize it. We'll announce it on our page for Jay Mercado and Sid Ventura. Charlie Guna, uh, signing off for episode 200. Thanks, guys, for sticking with us for 200 episodes. You. Yes. Sana, you. I don't know how far we're going to reach, but we're going to keep on going. We're going to keep trying to keep the show on the air. Mm -hmm. So, makita uh, kita po tayo. Maraming salamat sa Global yes. Impact Network. For... The scenes, thank you, thank you, Carla. Thank you, Carla. So we'll thank see you, you guys man. next week. Hopefully, we can complete this episode last we did for Ompong Sigura. We'll do it for you guys. So thank you so much. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Thank you. See you. A leader in key sectors so vital to the growth of our nation. Food, beverage, packaging, infrastructure, energy, and power. Proudly Filipino, through our well-loved brands, we carry the flag overseas. Yet we've always held out for ourselves a larger purpose. To use our scale, size, and dynamism to deliver products and services that can unlock and accelerate new opportunities for growth and drive our economy forward. We are committed to contribute to a resilient and globally competitive Philippines where businesses like San Miguel can use their resources and imagination to expand the economy and ensure that prosperity is widely shared. Today, our focus is on generating investments and projects that will enable our country to achieve its full promise. Malasakit is woven into all that we do, from ensuring that more Filipinos are food secure, have access to reliable, sustainable, and affordable energy, world-class roads, airports, mass transit, stronger communities, and greater economic opportunities. 
we are helping build the Philippines that can carry our 110 million strong population into a future whose defining challenges of our time will be an energy transition, resource scarcity, and the need for greater inclusiveness. As a company, we have set our sights on building the nation of our dreams. By leveraging our expertise, leadership, and reach, as San Miguel, we will do what it takes to build a better future for all Filipinos.